Can AI predict your cancer outcome? The quick answer is yes. But recent advances in artificial intelligence, or AI, now allow us to predict patient outcomes using sub-visual features in medical images. That is, features that are really not easy to see with the human eye. And this is going to have a huge impact in healthcare, in the way that patients are treated, and also in the way that we can predict the outcome of their disease. Now, this is really true, particularly in pathology. And pathology is the study of disease, um, and is very common in the way that diseases are diagnosed. So as an example, if you identify an unusual lump in your body, you might go to a doctor, and the doctor might take a needle biopsy, which is a small sample of tissue from that lump. The sample would then be sent to the lab and placed on a microscope slide where a pathologist, a highly trained medical doctor, would look at that tissue sample and look for signs of disease and decide what your diagnosis might be. Now, more recently, pathologists start to use digital images, um, very large images um, of the microscope slide that allows them to look at the pathology or the tissue um, on their computer screens. And this is an example of what that might look like. So here we have a slide, uh, an image of uh, a piece of prostate. So this prostate tissue sample would have been sent to the lab. It would have been sliced very finely into a very fine tissue section, placed on a microscope slide, and then stained with special dyes called hematoxylin and eosin um, that allow us to really visualize the tissue structure um, and understand what the tissue looks like more easily. And we can zoom in on this tissue image. So um, we can zoom in a little deeper. And I love to look at these, the, the morphology of the tissue, the way the tissue is structured, is really beautiful and very complex. If we zoom into uh, a high magnification, what you see here is um, individual nuclei of cells. So each circle that you see here, each purple circle, is the nucleus of an individual cell. And you'll notice that many of these cells are very different in shape. Some are very round, others are more elongated. Um, and even amongst the round ones, there's quite a bit of difference in how they look. Some are a little punctate, others are darker. There's quite a bit of variety here. And it turns out that the variety um, that you're looking at can be really important for determining um, the outcome of a patient's disease. Another example of this are these two images that you see here. The sample on the left or the image on the left is from one patient and the sample on the right is from a totally different patient. But when a pathologist looks at these samples, they are both scored with the same grade of cancer. Now, both have the same pathology score, but the patients themselves are very different. The outcome of the disease may be very different, and the treatment that each patient might respond to could also be different. And so we are using artificial intelligence to really explore the patterns and the structure of the tissue to give us clues into which patients might respond to a certain drug or which patients might have a good or a bad outcome. Now, pathologists can use additional techniques to give them more clues into um, the, what's happening in the disease. So for example, this is a, an image which has been stained with antibodies for a particular protein uh, using a technique called immunohistochemistry. Doctors can also use molecular tests and, and genomic testing, for example. But these kinds of tests are expensive and time consuming and often don't have all the answers. So we're taking up an approach using artificial intelligence. Now, the model that you see here 
is a diagram representing a deep learning neural network. And this network has nodes, which are the circles, it has layers and multiple connections between the nodes and the layers, very similar to the structure of a human brain. And it turns out that the way we train these AI models is very similar to the way that we would teach a human. So for example, how do we teach a child the difference between a dog and a cat? Now, both have two eyes, both have two ears, both are fluffy with whiskers and so forth, but there's a clear difference between what a dog looks like and what a cat looks like that you can learn over time. And the way that we train children uh, to do this is by showing them many examples of dogs and cats and over time, as they see more and more examples of these two different animals, they learn to distinguish between the two. Now, AI works in a very similar way. So if you imagine we have different groups of patients, we can train our AI model to learn the difference between what a sample looks like from one group of patients and what a sample might look like from another group of patients. So in this case, we have blue patients and red patients. Um, but blue patients could represent patients that have a very aggressive form of cancer, for example. And red patients could represent patients that may have a much less aggressive form of cancer and could be monitored by active surveillance. Another example could be that the blue patients could represent a group of patients that would respond very well to a very specific drug, and the red patients may be non-responders or patients that wouldn't respond to this drug. So to train our AI model to distinguish between these different groups, we literally use sets of data um, as training data from images um, from each of these different patients. Now we go through a model sort of iteration process to try and train the model to work as well as we can. And then it's really important to test and validate the model. And so to do that, we take data or images from a mixture of patients where we really know what the answer is. We know the outcome or we know whether they're responders or non-responders. And we put those patients' images into our model and we really test to see whether our model can accurately separate the two different groups and distinguish between blue patients and red patients and how well it does doing that. Now, it turns out that the highest performing versions of this type of model are usually custom built and use self-supervised training techniques, um, self-supervised learning techniques. Uh, that, that really kind of give very high levels of performance. And as an example, we're actually building models like this that are giving us performance in the high 90s, um, often 98, 99%, which is really impressive for a technique um, such as this. And we always monitor accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity to really understand how our model is working um, and how well it is predicting what we are trying to find out. So once we've developed the model, trained the model, tested and validated the model, we can then use it on patients where we don't know the answer to the question. So here we can take an unknown patient, we can feed it into our AI model, and we can understand with a very um, precise degree of confidence whether that patient would fall into the category, um, the same category as the patients in the red group or the patients in the blue group. And this type of information can really help inform doctors about a patient's outcome or which drug um, might be the best one for them to take. Now, one of the big challenges for this whole field is the concept of data diversity. And of course, patients are not blue patients or red patients. There's a huge diversity of people and we have to be really careful as a society that we use data, very diverse data, in our training data sets for these AI models to make sure that they work well for all races um, and sexes 
uh, and work well for all of our populations. So that is something really important that society as a whole needs to keep in mind as we develop these new techniques. Now, as a biologist, I'm very excited about another aspect of these models, which is really called explainable AI. And this is the concept of trying to understand how these AI models predict the outcomes and relating it back to the original biology. So what you see in this model, in this image here on the left, is a tissue section from a colorectal cancer. Um, and on the right, you see what we call an attention heat map. And this is a heat map where areas of the tissue that are very important in determining the prediction for the patient are highlighted in yellow or green. And we can really zoom in and look at this in a lot more detail to understand the specific cell types or specific regions of the tissue that would be important for predicting the outcome of the disease. And this can un inform our understanding of the mechanism of the disease and help lead to discovering new therapies. So this is a, a part of AI that I'm personally very excited about. So I believe that this new class of predictive AI models will really have an impact in the way that we treat patients and also um, in improving patient outcomes and hopefully saving lives. Thank you.